I'm sorry, it's 20 page, 28 pages, but I try to read this. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have time for questions and discussion. I, I was just curious why Islamization is so popular in terms of, because you said that over, the, over this last century, more and more people have become uh, more religious, more pious, more Wahhabist uh, in Africa. I'm curious what, what the allure of that is, especially when you realize that the largest slave trade in the world was the Arab slave trade, where they deported Africans, uh, forced them to be Muslims, and, and brought them into the, the Middle East, which and it ha also had a very high death rate. So I'm curious, when, when there's that history of, of Arabs uh, mistreating Africans, why, why there's such a drive to copy the Arabs in, in their In, their in my paper, there is a part of this, I will repeat. Uh, even I have a novel who's coming out in uh, a few months that I'm dealing like a, some, like a resume for 50 years of African independence. Yes, the ignorance don't know that uh, Arabs have been the first to make a uh, black body like an international object for slavery. That is ignorant. Even they know it, uh, when they see black in Arab countries, they don't see black like a minister in Arab countries. But they are majority. If you go to Libya, uh, to Libya, uh, they are majority. Why they are not presidents? Why they are not president? Why they are down? So I'm not, I, as I quoted with my metro, it's, just fa it's not just fact. You have to interpret it. You have to, to have the knowledge, but to, to go over the knowledge. Yes, it, it in, in this part is, is here because it was not really the, the, the point uh, to do, but I quote it. I quote it. And there were those who teach, uh, who taught to uh, Europeans and help them. So uh, how it's a good business, also. So when you know such a thing, you have to make an interpretation. We are philosophers. We are not ideological position uh, now. I just the fact, and you have to make an interpretation. And for me, it's not uh, to say, oh, no, I got the rap. No, I have friends, uh, okay, and I have parents, uh, and uh, parents who are Muslims and. Those who are working every day at the mosque, so when I go, we, we sit down together, we speak, and they say, oh, what do you do? And uh, okay, so the problem is uh, the ignorance of people. Okay, ignorance of people. And I think that it's not to, to speak about a problem that exists. We cannot change fact. Okay, but we can overcome problems that we had in the, the past. But to, to overcome uh, problem need generosity, need a new consciousness, need new person. Okay, that was why the uh, uh, European European philosopher didn't succeed to prevent the society against anti-Semitism because they didn't they didn't go themselves to question themselves. And we, as uh, my generation, I don't know why, but uh, for sure. The past now, when I look at the past, I know that how I feed my mind, how also I took the decision for facing concepts and historic fact protect me to remain who I am and a free thinker. So, if I, yes, if I, wait, 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 okay. I got a, if I can follow up on the other yeah. question first, that's sort of a continuation. So, you speak about how uh, this. The, the I, I just want to write because this this paper will become a, a small essay. So all the questions I, I have here, I will answer in the essay. So you speak, so to, to, to come back to the point you just made, you said it's a question of ignorance. And then you also, you wrote, in part of your response, you speak about how the philosophers didn't go in themselves to prevent the Shoah, at least, at least morally and ethically, forget uh, militarily or physically. But I'll even go a step further. It's, it was the most uh, educated people, the philosophers, the, uh, the scholars, the, the only institution in Nazi Germany to voluntarily get rid of the Jewish uh, members or colleagues was the, the academy. The only one, the police, the military, they worked, they resisted actually at the times 
to get rid of their Jewish colleagues, but the universities uh, voluntarily got rid of them. Uh, Heidegger and all this. Uh, and it reminds me of the question today. In, in the Western Academy, there is a tremendous hostility, and I would even say uh, activism among universities, not even to deal with the questions that we deal with. So why, why is it that uh, the academy cannot deal with these questions of anti-Semitism between the, second, the First and Second World War in Europe? Philosophers, thinkers failed. And I would even say that these questions that you ask, contemporary anti-Semitism, is a taboo. And it's almost like a period of McCarthyism. And I am I'm being very, I'm not trying to be melodramatic. There's a, a denial of people who want to engage this issue. If, one minute please. If, yep. if you are a young scholar, student, or faculty member that engages this issue, you become marginalized. Um, and I'll just give you one example. Last week we had a professor from England who came to our seminar series at Harvard University, David Seymour. Uh, who came. He came, he's a very brilliant scholar, very bright guy, he kind of came from a working class background, made it to London School of Economics through polytechnics and community colleges. He did not tell his friends and colleagues that he was coming to Harvard University, which was his dream, his lifelong ambition and dream, because he was speaking about anti-Semitism. And in the United Kingdom, to give a lecture about anti-Semitism is a kiss of death. So Professor Bunibali, Mm -hmm. Why are intellectuals repeating the same <coughs> mistake? Okay, uh, that is, uh, I just uh, give what I, I saw in Europe. I've been there more than uh, almost uh, 30 years, uh, 20 and more, okay? And that is, uh, you have to know that uh, um, for philosophers, Sometimes when they think too exactly, the, 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 the idea are very perfect, the coherence of the idea are very perfect, what disturbs them and trap them is the fact that reality is priority. They don't understand why the, the right thinking, thought cannot uh, change the world. And I think that the intellectuals of Europeans could not accept what happened. And uh, the example is uh, people from the left. They always want like, the power in the society be like the, the, the train and they are the locomotive. They want big problems to solve. They want ideology and they are uh, sometimes uh, pro uh, third world and after they they are pro everything you want but the problems that intellectual have in uh, in uh, Europe is that they cannot they cannot erase what happened what they did as uh, I did, uh, or uh, what they did, what the law that happened in their own land, they can't accept the, the past. They cannot regard, they cannot face the Shoah. How it happened, even they asked, they didn't ask this question. They just want that it, it had never been. It what Nietzsche calls the dramatic fought against time. Okay? And in the other side, they support people from uh, urban society, you know, the poor people in uh, poor neighborhoods. They support them, not because they, they, they want uh, become, the people to become rich and to be well known. No, they support them because for them, their position is that there is not any more anti-Semitism in Europe. No more. The classical, the anti-Judaism is over. But as a quoted here, if those who read French, you can see 
the, this philosopher say that there is no anti-Semitism. No. It's, it's not material. It's like when you are in the computer, internet, you speak forum. It's a space, but without space. And for Badiou, which is a, a good philosopher, he said that it becomes like a, no material fact. Even they are killing Jews. They are killing Ilan because he wrote his book after they, they killed Ilan Alimi and after the attack of Toulouse. Even he said that anti-Semitism doesn't exist. And he justified the position yeah. of people. I want to interrupt you. He says it only doesn't exist. It only exists in the minds of a few Jews. Yes, that's, that is a Which dematerialization. Is that is a dematerialization, as I call it. It's a dematerialization of anti-Semitism. They are killing people that does not exist. That is the Jews that create this anti-Semitism. And the people, the small guy, the black guy, who start uh, to say, well, I want to eat a Jewish, now they are helping terrorists, Islamists in Mali. Those who went to Mali, they are black. They are not yellow. They are not green. Among the Islamists, they are black. Azam, they help, they cut hands, they kill people. They are not green. So, to answer to the question, the Europeans intellectual, like Heidegger, he never rejects and he never give up with his, uh, his national uh, socialist card, member card. So for them, if it were possible to go on to be the master of the world, Without the Jewish, the world, it will be uh, very happy. They would be very happy because that was the aim of Hitler. And I always say to Africans, like Fanon was saying, "You African, you are very stupid." When they will finish with the Jewish, it's you. You are too is coming. And that he wrote it when he was in in Algeria. He said that. What say the colonizer? They say that. The Jewish work in our administration, the black taking our wife, but Fano say, let's, the Jewish, the African have to listen. When they are speaking about the, the Jewish, after it's black. He didn't say Arabs. Even he helped Algerians to have their independence. He said, but he was discussing in uh, uh, Max, uh, black skin, white mask. Just saying to the Africans, when they are insulting Jewish, when they are speaking about the Jewish, the second in the list is you, not someone else. But sometimes people forget. They read, but they don't see what they are reading. And I used to read, not with my eyes, but with my ear. So, uh, first you and then Dal. Thank you. So uh, I, I appreciate what you said, and um, I wonder if you uh, if you bring that to uh, to students in Africa and what the response is if you do. You know, when you are teaching in Africa, even if we are not in colonization period, we are you are a big master. You know, they need to go from class to class. If you speak, and a man wants to make a fight with him, he's going to be lost. He will never go up to class to class. That's okay. That they are afraid to face you. Okay? But they are, we are, at the times, they know that you give them five minutes or 15 minutes to rest. They took their, their things and they go. What you are going to do? Okay? And for other people, for other students, they say, no, but it's uh, five years we make the croisade. It's nobody, does, nobody care. Now I call my friends. <laughs> when Mali starts, I say, I always tell you, behind words, behind words, there is reality and there are words. You see now? Tomorrow, you'll have the same advertising, g -Eight. And there is a... Uh, Mujao, um, this is a, a, a movement for Islamization of West Africa. I told you in the beginning that they 
in east is no problem. In south, in, it's no problem. In the north, it's an uh, Arab country. But the west, with its multiple empire that uh, fought against Arabs and Islamization, now for them, they have to come back. And that is the last part of uh, Africa to be conquered. And they are doing the same strategy as they did in Algeria. There they are many, many organizations of helping poor people. Uh, there is medicine, they come, they make operation of ISIS, Iraq, Iran, Iran is very present, Turkish, they are present, the Tariq Ramadan, every year, every course, uh, Burkina Faso, he come to give lectures, uh, but he's uh, well dressed, uh, yeah, new Muslims, and his, one of his parents was the creator of uh, Muslim Brotherhood, and he remained. So he's a very intelligent, he's a smart person, he's presented very well. So these intellectuals, Africans, who are Muslims, they say, okay, why should the state, be, uh, the colonial state, be represented as a Christian state? Why? What is our part? Uh, just last year, there were a national uh, conference about laicity. Laicity in Burkina Faso. That means that we have a problem. It was not a problem. When I was a child, Muslim, Christian, uh, paganist, Mohammedist, we live together in the same family. You are Christian, Muslim. More and more, if a Christian girl wants to get married with a Muslim, she has to convert it. Uh, you know? So we, if you see that in the society, the problem, which was not a problem, become a problem. So you are in, <laughs> in danger. The city was not a problem, but it became a problem. And Christians and Muslims want the state. Everyone wants to be well represented in the state. Like when they start in uh, Europe with the veil. Oh no, that is a problem, this is the discussion. Oh no, democracy, democracy. And yes, they took the veil. Now they are taking the, the state. At, as Nietzsche, Nietzsche said, if you want to destroy the democracy, you don't have to fight it with what? You have just to lie on institution and they will fall down. And that's what Islamization is doing. Islamists and terrorists are doing. They, are, they are say that we are democrats, like uh, the former prime minister uh, of uh, uh, Turkish. Oh yes, we are social democrats, but democracy in the world means some things. Democracy, like in Algeria, to take the power, like in Egypt with Morsi, to take the power, I'm elected president. So now I'm going to put the Sharia. That Western people don't understand. They are so sometimes so stupid, they will give the gun to the <laughs> They are best friends, and <laughs> after them, we have problems. So, uh, just in passing, it's worth noting that the very paradigms of science in Germany in the 30s, the faculties of the medical schools, they were the intellectual elite, the scientists. They were the first to cash in the Jews. So, yeah. since we are reenacting history again, is it surprising that it is the intellectuals in this country who are finding the Jews at fault and cashiering them where they can? It's just a comment to what he said. In, in Germany, very often, that was a, a, an economic situation where when Jews were let go from universities and other positions, then other people were able to take them. And that was part of part of what happened, that there was, uh, the economy was that they wanted to get jealousy. They just needed those positions, or they wanted those positions, and they didn't care about the human aspect of it. So that was very prominent in Germany. No matter if they were intellectuals, it was money. Mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, if there was over, uh, the money was not in the, uh, the hymn. 
No, but in the universities or doctors, when they would let you know. You know, you take a person like Heidegger. Let me give you an example. Heidegger, you know who is the, the master of Heidegger? He's a Jewish. Was his master, also the father of phenomenology. Okay? And Husserl fought to give his position, academic position, not to a Jew, not to uh, someone else, to his best student, as Anna Arendt also was student from. So, Jewish as, <laughs> sometimes when I, we are speaking, I say this here, Jews are like African. They are sometimes so naive. <laughs> they are so kind. That's a, they don't they don't see that this guy is a snake. I, I agree with you. He's of same subtility. We I uh, I always say no use the word our journalists the journalists don't have to use the word colonization in uh, the problem. But I cry in the world. So that is something which is similar between Jewish and black people. They are so naive. Yeah. They think that okay. I just I want to help, you know. He's a brain guy. Why should I take a stupid guy to the place? But it happened that when I got to the place, he, he did everything to eject. And Levinas as a world. No, Levinas is the ethical man. And my way of thinking and uh, dealing with problems in the world come from Levinas. Levinas is a hard person. If you read, he takes again. Uh, uh, Western uh, capitalism and uh, also imperialism is very hard, but also is ethical responsible. The world cannot deal to become a criminal. His world, the way, the tone, the expressivity of Levinas deal to ethic position. <coughs> That's also bad. So what is the stupidity here? It's not a kind. Hitler was above money. It was just to clean Europe from Jewish. Black Muslims or Islamist institution want to the world without Jewish. Or if they want Jewish inside, they will just be the Jimmy. Okay? Jimmy. You know what in the those who know the story you know. So Jewish are sometimes naive. Like Africa. Why naive? Look at we, the Africans are helping Muslims, and now they have they help them so much that they attack Mali. Mali represents, you know what Mali represents in the heart of Africans, in the re rehabilitation of African history. You know what it represents? The attack of Mali. It was like you cut black West West African black head, but we were. They were stupid. They, they say Afro Muslims in Paris, you know, uh, and uh, okay, that is the result. I have a question. I'm a little, little more positive. Uh, you know, in my own recollection, like I'm talking back into the '70s, I, I remember how what was then known as Tanganyika had tremendous representation in Israel, and Israel reached out to different African countries over the years. So my question to you is today, which are those countries, which of the African countries are being, and I know South Sudan, I believe, is one of them, but which ones are Israel heavily connected with and doing, uh, you know, uh, giving help and uh, have nice relations? Okay, I didn't have the list, but I can just... Yeah, you, you probably have one. Okay, I can just give you that... Uh, um, in 1984, at the end of 1984, and uh, the beginning of 1985, Ufubani made uh, a, a lecture that took five hours. Okay? The last word say that, he said to Arab people, Ufubani was the former president of agriculture. He has been president for 40 years. So, in 1985, the last part of his lectures conference was, you Arabs, you ask me, us to follow you because we come from the third world. But we cannot follow you like 
you don't have a unity, you don't know where you are going. So, Ufo Banyi has uh, some state, I can say, called Ghana, and some say, I, I had the list. In 1973, they didn't uh, vote to make the question Zionist is uh, anti is a racism. There are the few countries, I think, uh, 18 countries that I have to, I have to check in my paper. And Arakos never took position against uh, Israel. Even Mauritania. So, as Ufubani was leader of all Africa, because uh, his country was rich and he has money, from him, all the state, African state, Francophone state, and many English uh, Anglophone state renew their relationship with Israel. In uh, 200, uh, 2004, there were perhaps uh, eight or ten year, uh, state who were not, we didn't establish the diplomatic relation with Israel. Okay, but today, I didn't, uh, I didn't check the last vote, but I know, I checked for Africans, they didn't take a position, they didn't, the law, uh, they represented to, to vote for a Palestinian position, far for sure, that I know. But I can, it, it is easier to check it. We have time, I'm sorry, for one more question, because we have to leave the room at around 8 o'clock, so anybody who has not asked... Just, just to something, and some people forget, if Africans, is a big country of agriculture, coffee. Yeah? It has been done by Israeli people. And this tradition remains. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, do you have any books that you can books and want to read them? Uh, it's a novel that uh, it finished, but um, uh, it's a self uh, publishing books, so uh, we have to, to come uh, in a few times. We're going to put it on our, we're going to distribute it on this way. Okay, and I, I, I don't, so one more comment, please. Quick, quickly. Uh, I was just curious, because Israel is a state with a number of uh, various ethnicities and, and the idea of, of representation, especially given that uh, there are very few countries that have come back from colonization and have become first world countries, why is Israel not uh, used as a template in more African countries as a way of organizing um, a political system where you have a variety of different ethnicities and uh, different social groups? Uh, for me, uh, Israel has changed its way, its diplomatic way of, with African states. They don't have to be afraid to have friends everywhere in Africa. Western will fall down by uh, the Islamization, not because Islamists, the Islamists are strong, because Europeans are taking wicked position. Okay? Concerning Israel and African state, I, I regret that why should there is a, like agence Islamic, Islamic agence for Africa, and we don't have Israel agencies for Africa, which make intellectuals. That was our aim when we created Jewf. We were not uh, only speaking. No, we wanted that intellectuals deal with problem, art problem, slavery, everything, colonization, decolonization. When intellectuals are engaged and they discuss really about problems, we can cannot solve the problem, but we are like a, a kind of models, okay? Many years I tried to create a center uh, for a Levinas center for a dialogue between Jewish and African and all the people, intellectual people, who want to educate people to have, even there is a conflict, to have position, rational, rational, and, uh, rational and ethical position, but it's very hard. So I all the time see that the Israel people have to work with the intelligent people, the people who know their culture, the people who can take care about the world, but uh, I'm not in a misfather house. I'm, <laughs> I'm just uh, the friend of this problem. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes, you know, on that note, eh? on this note, yeah. so, so thank you, Shalom.